Attack of the Show, TV's only source for all the stuff you care about. I'm Kevin Pereira. Hey! Kevin, it's lovely to see you. It's lovely to be seen. Oh. <laughs> I'm Candace Bailey. Yes, you are. Yes. We're coming to you live from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. On the show today, Michael Pena from 30 Minutes. Yeah. coming on today's show. Yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> then it's TV Tuesday. <laughs> I meant to say it's and that's and I said this. <laughs> then it's TV Tuesday. <laughs> and that means a visit from the king of DVDs, Chris Gord. Yay! He's reviewing Alien Stoner Comedy, Paul, yeah. and Medieval Stoner Comedy, Your Highness. This is also true. <laughs> Plus, London has descended into chaos, and both authorities and rioters are using social media. We're going to explore the role of BlackBerry, Facebook, and other online companies. We're going to see exactly what they're doing in the loop. And then we explore the history of the Nintendo 64. Yay. From the first great console FPS to the Ocarina of Time, we're going to look at the way the N64 changed gaming in Tales from the console graveyard. Ocarina, Ocarina. Right now, it's tomato. time to peek through the web's curtains. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's disgusting. Oh. Let's go around the net. <laughs> Don't even. I'm talking about drapery. Uh-huh. <laughs> what kind? Uh, the beefy kind. Aww. You know, most of the time when people buy small dogs, they're looking for something adorable. But as today's number five shows us, sometimes the evilest things come in the cutest packages. Noises and possibly counting in German. Do we really know that that dog is possessed by an evil presence? You should see the craps that it takes. Oh. I'm serious. They come out in the shape of a pentagram. Oh. A, a poopy, poopy pentagram. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> in at number four, a tribute to Michael Bay. A poopy, <laughs> poopy pentagram. Yeah. Hey! Number four, a tribute to Michael Bay, who's revolutionized action film cinematography with classic summer movies like The Rock, Bad Boys, and Transformers. Yeah. It turns out that one of his most iconic shots is maybe a little too iconic. Give it a shot. Bring it. Yeah! This just got real. Yeah! Pretty good. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Candace Bailey. <laughs> Candace Bailey. How'd that feel? It felt great. I'm ready to murder some robots. I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we know there aren't usually a lot of Joni Mitchell jokes on Around the Net, but we're going to make an exception for today's number three. The Jitney is a long-running shuttle service from New York City to the Long Island fancy town known as the Hamptons. Ooh. Now, here's one woman's musical journey of mass transit discovery. I grew up in California. I thought I had it pretty well, but when I moved to my child, it had been hell. Oh, sure, there was Lake Tahoe, Big Sur, and Yosemite. But I never saw the Hamptons, and I never rode the Jeepney. Jeepney. I grew up dreaming of this. Jitney, but I knew not 
shocked and so surprised to learn the jitney's just a f bus I gotta say, big deal. Because I hear people sing, singing about the LA bus system all the time. It's not anything new. Okay, singing or screaming hysterically on the street corner? Singers are the ones that usually wear pants, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, screaming, then, is what I meant. I meant <laughs> lots of people screaming about yes, the LA bus system. Right. Yeah, sorry about that. It's okay. Today's number two video is yet another <laughs> permutation of Neon Cat. Of what? <laughs> I thought if I just said it really quickly. Yeah, I'm sure that's what you thought, but what did you say right there? Nian. Okay, now, now slow it down for me so I know exactly what you're actually trying to say in that word. So Nian. What? What? <laughs> I mean, should we, I mean, we're gonna Are let you, that slide? Are you it's, just giving me a hard time? No, it's Nian. Nian cat, Nian. 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 <laughs> if Nian Korean cat. were your first language, we would let this slide. But uh, Yan. Nian. Nian. Yes, exactly. Nian? Sure. The magical flying cat has been remixed to death, but today's live action take. Nian, Nian, Nian. Like that. <laughs> Nian, Nian, Nian. That's exactly it. This really captures the majesty of the original. a meme in real life. It's another to totally risk your life doing it. Totally right. And so you, brave sir, get the AOTS Medal of Honor, which is, uh, it's this. It's a coupon for half off a large one topping pizza. Yay! I'm sorry, it expired. Aww. Congratulations! Yay! So scary. Still ahead, slow down. Routine. Dry humping, 80 style, in our number one around the net. This is why we can't have nice things. clip from the Philadelphia program Dancing on Air. All right. <laughs> it's set to Corey Hart's smooth 1986 ode to romance, I Am By Your Side. Mm -hmm. Brace yourself for some slow, slow, slow dancing. Yeah, yeah. And keep your eyes open for a young Kelly Ripa who will never live this down. Today we have a slow spotlight dance. We're going to find out who our dancers can count on to always be by their side. Okay, couple number one is Kelly and Mike. Kelly says she counts on her boyfriend to be by her side. Meanwhile, Mike says he looks for his mom to be right there by his side. Here's Peaches and Rich. I think we all know the answer to this one. Peaches says she looks for Rich. Rich looks for Peaches to be by his side. Tony and Pisces are next. Tony says she looks to Monique when she needs someone to come by her side. And Pisces says he looks for Janine. <laughs> okay. Couple number one in our spotlight dance is Kevin and Candace. <laughs> Candace enjoys romantic comedies and walks on the beach. <laughs> Kevin says he likes, quote, burying things. <laughs> Candace says she'll always have her mom by her side. Kevin wants someone by his side who can keep a dark secret. <laughs> Candace likes ponies and rainbows. Kevin likes collecting human skulls and once put his genitals on a park bench. <laughs> I, wait, wait, th that, that can't be right. Is no, that's that... right, it's right, keep going. Really? Genitals? Okay, let's uh, let's change the tempo and put on a new record. 
called Tales from the Console Graveyard. <laughs> By 1996, sales of consoles were at an all-time high. The 32-bit Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation were pushing the CD format. Atari was making one last effort with the Jaguar, and Nintendo would release their new console, the Nintendo 64. Codenamed Ultra 64, this was the world's first true 64-bit gaming console, and one of the first systems to offer 3D gaming. <laughs> The Sega Saturn has come out and has kind of been bungled in terms of its marketing. And uh, yeah, obviously the PlayStation is already out. And here comes the Nintendo 64. And it's really offering something on these 3D graphics, these polygons, this sense of explorable world. The N64 sold for 200 bucks, was packed with a 32-bit graphics chip, four megs of RAM, and ran on a 64-bit processor, making it the most powerful console of its day. It was also boxed with a single controller, which drew a lot of attention due to its odd shape, buttons, and expansion slot for a memory card and rumble pack. That was an awkward, awkward joystick. But with that said, it gave us the analog stick, and that is now a mainstay of any console controller. The N64 would sell half a million units in its first four months and launch with two games, Pilot Wing 64 and the 3D version of everyone's favorite mustachioed plumber, Hello! Super Mario 64. Mario 64 for me is probably one of, if not my favorite console game of all time. It was revolutionary. You had a camera that never worked quite right, and it was incredibly frustrating. But at the time, it was a miracle of modern invention. Here we go! Game cartridges were ROM-based and could hold up to 512 megabits of memory. However, Nintendo would be the last major console to produce games in the cartridge format. The cartridge format was very, very expensive. The disc format was very, very cheap. This was one of those big moments when Nintendo started to lose that affinity of the third party. <laughs> this choice eventually led to many companies like Squaresoft, leaving Nintendo to produce games like Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation. In spite of this, several games would become huge hits for the system, including the first-person shooter, GoldenEye. If you were in college or even high school, during that time and you didn't play GoldenEye, you unfortunately didn't have hands and life must be really tough for you now. For the longest time, you thought first person shooter, mouse and keyboard, but really GoldenEye made it palatable and made it entertaining. The classic brawler Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which is considered by most critics to be the best game of all time. Something as simple as the Z-Trigger lock and lock. <laughs> just once again changed how you're going to be building and designing games inside of a 3D space and how that was copied almost instantaneously from every other game that followed. Of course, it did have its share of missteps, namely Superman 64, in which the Man of Steel would fly through rings in a virtual world. Superman 64 deserves every bad thing ever said about it. It was unplayable. There's no time to waste. I actually think it's one of the, the, the most important games of this console generation cycle because it showed people how to make a game in the worst way possible. Your fate will be sealed, Superman. Over the next few years, Nintendo released several color schemes of the console and sold about 33 million units worldwide. But by 2002, the console was discontinued as Nintendo would finally give in to the CD format with the GameCube. While the Nintendo 64 would push several innovations, ranging from the analog stick to 3D gaming, Nintendo ultimately lost its foothold on the market to the PlayStation. The N64 should be remembered for being a very, very solid system that was rather maligned at the time, but it was just a wonderful moment where there was a little bit of experimentation and that Nintendo perfection coming out on that system. DVDs come out of the Mommy DVD special area and are placed in the incubators known as Netflix and Blockbuster. Blockbuster! What? Here are this week's newborns. Oh. Welcome back to the Chris Gore! Uh, <laughs> hearing, 
you say that, it sounds all kind of creepy. Woo! They're just DVDs. They're just DVDs. I don't sound creepy, Chris Gore. The description was creepy. Yeah. <laughs> it was very creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, creepy. Okay, I'm sorry. What Coming from me, that, it well, must be creepy. What, that's what bothers me, that you said it was creepy. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry to creep you out. Oh, no, it was good. All I enjoyed right. it. What's up first? Up first we have Paul! Yeah. Paul! Okay, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost are usually great on screen together. How do they do in Paul? Uh, they're a blast. It's like hanging out with two old friends. I love these guys. Uh, they're like modern day Laurel and Hardy. Uh, some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, and they're hilarious. I mean, I also love the fact that you get to see them at Comic-Con, which it's so accurate. I feel like I've been to that booth. I've seen that Princess Leah. I may have hit on her. No, it was all shot in New Mexico. All shot in New Mexico, which was really? shocking me the entire our movie was shot in New Mexico, and uh, it was, I, I love this. It's a fun ride. Kristen Wiig is great. Bill Hader, Jason Bateman, great cast, funny, great cast. stoner alien. It's all the things I love. All right. Yeah. Well, what what extras do we get on this desk? Uh, well, there's a ton of behind the scenes, including one behind the scenes where it's just Simon Pegg making weird faces to the camera, <laughs> which was cool. Um, and then Seth Rogen actually doing the character Paul. I mean, he <laughs> did motion awesome. capture work uh, on this. I, I don't know if he'll get nominated for an Oscar for uh, <laughs> for this motion capture <laughs> performance, but it was very authentic as a stoner, I will say. Uh, but but Are you it's a stoner? Just, uh, yes, he plays a stoner alien in this. <laughs> he did a little stoner motion capture. Got it. But um, I, I really love the commentary like um, Simon Pegg Nick Frost um, they just have so much fun together and you learn that this movie came the whole idea for this movie came from a, a napkin Simon Pegg had drawn on a napkin a picture of an alien giving the finger oh. and that was his whole like this will be our next movie and it was just an alien giving the finger right. pretty cool <laughs> awesome. all right what's the bottom line buy it all right next CBD your highness yeah. it's your highness now this may be the first medieval stoner film we've ever seen. What'd you think? Uh, well, the stoner part actually is uh, a smaller part of this movie. It's not It's not so much about, about the pot smoking. Do you need it, to be high to see this? No, no, I mean, you can enjoy it without that, but what I'll tell you, it Natalie it Portman, <laughs> Natalie Portman deserves, I mean, they gave her an Oscar, she deserves the yeah. slow clap for that blurred, blurred behind. Does but it if you show get the DVD, Yes, it does, I am happy to say. Is it nice? It's 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 awesome. It's 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 still worthy. I can tell you that. All right. Um, I'm gonna do a little motion capture on my uh, device. But what uh, what what's cool? What's you know when you pause it and you get a picture, a still. Oh. Some of the TVs have a still. You can grab a still. And you're saying you I'm creepy. Features. No, I wasn't saying you're creepy. I'm saying me saying you're creepy means something creepy happened. But but uh, what's fun about this is if you love movies like Crawl. Uh huh. Yeah. The Dark Crystal. Yeah. Beastmaster. This is this is sort of an ode to those kind of films with uh, a magical comedy c c candy coating. Okay, what's the bottom line? Bottom line is rent it. Yeah. A lot of fun. Cool. All right, what else do we have to check out, Chris? Super. Yeah. Super. Now, where do you rank Super among all the other superhero movies this year? I am dead serious when I tell you that Super is the best superhero movie I've seen this yeah. year. Yeah. It's one of the best, one of the best movies I've seen this year, and it, it's a candidate already for being in my top ten DVDs of the year. Oh. I love wow. it's, it's, it's Here's what it is: it's a send up of superhero movies while also being a great superhero movie, and it simultaneously is hilarious. It's it's also gross. It's disturbing, right? And it's, it's it's dark. It's also incredibly socially responsible because a lot of people would uh, criticize this movie for being extremely violent. If you hit someone in the head with a wrench that is huge, you are going to crack their head open and they will bleed. It's very socially responsible. Um, it's it's heart-wrenching. I'll say this. Rain Wilson should get nominated yeah. for an Oscar yeah. for his performance in this movie. I am dead serious. It's, 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 it's sort of like Batman plus Taxi Driver equ equals Super. So okay. if you like those two movies, All right. um, uh, and special Gun, features, special features, uh, like there's some behind the scenes. There's an interesting behind the scenes on the cartoon animated sequence um, uh -huh. that's at the beginning, which I thought was great. The soundtrack for this movie is amazing. I went and bought the soundtrack, which was incredible. Um, and then, and then, uh, you know, just God, seeing the heart shooting. that went into this, the the, the just heart, and, and also. 
it, there's hentai in this. Yeah. There's live action hentai. Awesome. Rain Wilson's brain is touched by the finger of God. It's something you've never seen in a movie. It's incredibly creative. It shows what you can do with no budget. One of my favorite movies of the year. You already know what my verdict is. I think I know bottom line is buy. Bottom line is buy, yeah. buy super, buy right. two copies of super. Real quick, quick yes. pick. Quick pick. Is a Conan movie coming out? How about the classic? Conan yeah. the Barbarian yeah. and Conan the Destroyer out on Blu-ray. It's a great soundtrack nice. by ba Basil Polydorus, if I could throw in a little nerd reference there. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. I agree with you on the super, good, good buddy. Great movie. Still ahead, there's actually panic on the streets of London right now. We're going to find out how social media is affecting the riots in the loop. And later, Michael Pena from 30 Minutes or Less will be here. So you should probably continue watching. Probably. That's a painful way to get rid of your tattoo of your ex-wife. Yeah, he used the same tools to get rid of his ex-wife. Ha 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 ha. Still ahead, a different kind of whale song. All the news you need to know. Feed, 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 feed. It's Tuesday, August 9th, and here are your top stories. The poop is hitting the fan all over the UK as riots shake London. So what's a good Brit to do but stock up on baseball bats? Since the chaos began, sales of aluminum bats, or as they say in the UK, aluminium bats, have gone up 5,000% on Amazon's UK website. Isn't that how you say it? <laughs> aluminium, whatever. <laughs> okay, shut up, Kevin. Uh, I've gone up 5,000% on Amazon's UK website. <laughs> and wooden bat sales have also shot up 3,600%. <laughs> shut up, Kevin. Looking for protection or rioters looking to smash windows. Either way, we'll tell you everything you need to know about the madness across the pond and why some folks are blaming Blackberry later on in the loop. Is that, yeah. is that good? That was good. <laughs> okay. You totally redeemed yourself. Two Jews walk into a bar. What? It's not a joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two professors from Tel Aviv University School of Chemistry have developed a special straw that detects the presence of any date rape drug in your drink. Their straw detects GHB and ketamine and will include tests for roofie soon. The straw lights up if you've been dosed and so far hasn't yielded any false positives. Why are you laughing now? Oh, that's a funny straw, that's all. <laughs> the inventors hope it will be available in a year and a half. And finally, do you think you like Star Trek? Because let me tell you, you do not like it as much as the King of Jordan. Oh. King Abdullah, who once turned in a captivating Star Trek cameo as a crew member of the USS Voyager, has greenlit plans for a theme park that's heavily influenced by Star Trek. The park, which will be called the Red Sea Astrarium, will offer an immersive 23rd century experience for visitors and be powered entirely by renewable energy. And all it's going to cost is a measly $1.5 billion. Oh. Now that's the final frontier of fandom. I'm Candace Bailey, and you've just been fed. Now let's go back to Kevin. Yay! Thank you, Candace Bailey. <laughs> Aluminium. Aren't you? Uh, as you just uh -huh. heard in the feed, unfortunately, London's burning. The UK is in the midst of the worst riots it's seen in years. Are you kidding me? What started as an isolated incident last Thursday has exploded into a movement across the nation. Rioting, looting, vandalism. Whether it's racial tensions boiling over or a response to government cutbacks, the British people are letting their frustrations be known. We get no like the recent uprisings in Egypt, technology and social media have played a significant role in connecting the people's resistance. Young citizens are using everything from Facebook to coded text messages to coordinate efforts and avoid police. But now, British authorities have gone so far as blaming platforms like Twitter for the continuing chaos. And now that BlackBerry manufacturer Research in Motion has agreed to comply with authorities and assist the crackdown, the British people aren't sitting down anytime soon. So what role is social media playing in the chaos across the pond? It's anarchy, it's revolution, it's the loop.
right, joining me from London, England via Skype to help us make sense of it all, associate editor for Wired UK, Olivia Salon is here. Hello, Olivia. Hello. Uh, I don't... I don't hear sirens or, or crackling fires or helicopters, so uh, am I to assume that you are safe and sound right now? I am safe and sound, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very centrally located, and, and most of the action has been taking place in the outskirts of London. Um, but actually tonight, it, it seems a little bit quieter. I mean, we've got 16,000 police in the centre of London um, trying to prevent any outbreaks of violence. Um, we all, all the shops have been boarded up. There's lots of anticipation. We've got told to go home early to make sure we got home safely. But so far, so good. I mean, I can hear a few helicopters going past and a few police cars. But I think the main action has moved to different cities in the UK, such as Manchester and Birmingham. All right. Well, Olivia, pardon our uh, uh, American ignorance on this issue because we've been kind of uh, coming to grips with the fact that our own country is going to hell. Um, <laughs> but the social unrest it began last Thursday when the police shot and killed uh, somebody. Is that correct? Correct. There's a guy called Mark Duggan who's been variously described as a gangster and then a family man, and he got shot in a place called Tottenham in London last Thursday by a policeman. Um, this led to a few kind of peaceful protests initially in Tottenham, but then off the back of those peaceful protests, um, they kind of dissolved into violent protests, um, largely down to kind of opportunity opportunists and, and thieves who wanted to kind of capitalize on, on the, the, the heightened sense of, of drama. Mm -hmm. and, and that I understand. I understand the, the mob mentality, how that can overtake uh, individual pockets of people. But how did this get branded all of a sudden as the Blackberry Revolution? Is this, I mean, this isn't viral marketing here. So w w why, why the Blackberry uh, riots? Right. Well, Blackberry phones aren't just popular among business people. They're all, in the UK, they're the most popular sort of phone amongst um, UK teenagers. I think 37% of teenagers have a BlackBerry. And one of the main reasons for having a BlackBerry is because you get this free messenger service, BlackBerry Messenger. Um, it's used because it's free. You don't have to pay for text messages. You don't have to top up credit on your phone. Um, it's not, I don't think it's specifically used because it's encrypted and it's hard to monitor. However, this has all been turned into a big kind of drama about how, because BlackBerry Messenger, it's quite difficult to monitor in the same way that you can, like, very easily search for stuff on Twitter or Facebook. It's been branded, you know, the BlackBerry riot, just purely because this is the service that the young people are using. And I, I think it's a little bit ridiculous. I don't think it's people are using it because it's encrypted. They're just using it because that's what they use. Right. And, and that encryption at the end of the day might not even matter, right? Because as I've heard recently, Research in Motion, the parent company, has been asked by authorities to hand over chat logs, to, to search the transcripts, to let the police monitor yeah. in real time. And all that can happen right now without a warrant. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Research in Motion has been fully cooperative with the police. And whenever there's a, a situation where there's a, a public order disturbance or, you know, there could potentially be criminal activity as a result of of any of the, uh, the communications going through that network, they um, can be held to account and they can either through court order or in some cases they don't even need a court order, um, give access to some of the details of their, cu of their customers to the police. Mm. I love that there's this always this delicious irony where, where uh, the people love to claim that technology and social messaging and social media, they're all to blame here. But at the same time, the authorities turn to that for assistance in their time of need. And I've heard that they're now using sites like Flickr and Facebook and monitoring tweets to actually uh, catch some of these rioters. Is that happening as well? Yeah, that's absolutely happening. I mean, it is, it's, it is pretty ridiculous. Like, social media and Blackberries are just purely a communications channel. They don't cause riot. Um, however, some of the things we've seen are, are things like the Metropolitan Police actually posting photos of CCTV um, footage onto their Flickr account and asking uh, members of the public to identify those people. So it's a kind of crowdsourced uh, identification of criminals, which is a really cool idea, and uh, I think it should be applauded. Uh, likewise, Twitter and, and other um, various social networks are being used to kind of, uh, what do you call it, like activate the cleanup process. So we've got accounts such as um, at uh, Riot Cleanup and at Riot Wombles. I don't know if you, you guys ever watch the Wombles, but they're these uh, c crazy creatures um, in a kind of cartoon of our youth that used to go around picking up rubbish. Uh, um, I'm sure American television will poach that idea soon enough, but it hasn't. Yeah, ex 
exactly. So uh, we've got these, uh, everyone's kind of going out there with their brooms and they're going to go and help clean up their communities and try and reclaim the streets. Well, I, I, I love that it can be both used for good and, of course, the negative. And I hope that, that, that the, a crazy and turbulent event doesn't get completely glossied over by the fact that it's been branded the, the Blackberry riots. Um, and yeah, Olivia, I, I very much hope so, too. I hope you remain safe tonight, and I hope that that situation gets under control as soon as possible. Olivia Salon from Wired UK, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. We appreciate thank you keeping you. us in the loop. Right now, yeah, thank you. we're going to go Take over care. to Candace. And now, it's time to get manly. How many push-ups should I be able to do? One million. What kind of dog makes the best companion? A puma. I put on a few pounds. Can you recommend a healthy diet? How about you use the recipes from the cookbook in your vagina? It's time for Dude Mad Rod's manly tip for nudeness. Hey, dude, I've got a small wiener. Does that really matter? More than life itself. A small penis, and that's a freakish deformity. It's like red hair or an extra row of teeth. It amazes me that you announce this on television. <laughs> You're stupid, but you can minimize the shame. First off, stop calling it a wiener. A wiener is tiny by implication, but your wang muscle is immense. A dong? Hell, a dong sounds unstoppable. Or you can try giving your man staff an awesome nickname, something manly, like your nunchuck or your lightsaber, or my personal favorite, the one thing to rule them all. Pro tip, you can also use real people from history as well. No one's gonna question the size of your Ivan the Terrible or your Solovar King of Gorilla City. Ugh. All this penis talk's making me sick. I'm done here, f you. See you dumbasses next time for Dude Man Rod's Badly Tips for Dudeness. I like that. From the loop to Dude Man Rock. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hey, on tonight's new Proving Ground, Ryan Dunn and Jessica Chobot are out to prove that they can actually play a real-life version of Mortal Kombat complete with crazy weapons and supernatural powers. Here's a look at tonight's episode. We just need these to slow down or deter our opponent. We don't need to actually kill them. Let's see what happens. Let's, let's go, go do it. All right, let's go test it. All right. Let's kill something. Weapon test, sombrero de muerte. Oh, that's awesome! You got good aim. Oh! Oh, 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 that was awesome. I know. <laughs> Check out d4tv.com slash proving ground and stay tuned after attack for a brand new episode. And stay tuned to this whole program because Michael Pena from 30 Yay! Minutes or Less will be here. I swear, Candace, I swear. I believe you. You would be here. Yay! If you believe me. <laughs> believe it or not, uh, hitmen actually have problems, just like the rest of us. How you doing? Where are the other guys? It's just me, dog. Just uh, you call me sugar milk, bro. Sugar milk. You got the money? Is that the money? Yeah. Yes. Oh my god, it's so pretty. It's so pretty, bro. Look yes. at it. Oh my God, what you do? Rob a bank? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Ah, oh, that's cool, man. I'm proud of you, bro. Check you later. Wait, uh, hey, man. Yo, wh where's the code? Uh, I don't know no code. What you talking about? Like, what code? Come on, man. Just give me the code, okay? Like Da Vinci code, like code red, like the Contra code, like up down, up down, A B A B, left right, left right. That one? Okay, yo, dude, come on, stop messing with me. Just give me the code, okay? No, I don't have no code, bro. Give me the code for the bomb, okay? Who brings a bomb to a drop, homie? I don't know your boss put this on me. I am my boss. <laughs> Joining me now, everybody, Michael Pena is here. Yeah. Hello, good sir. Yeah. We will get to that, that amazing performance in just a second, but there was, there was a, a worry, a siren sounded, people ran through the hallways panicked. Yeah. Um, even E and Style were crazy. They said, get Seacrest to report the fact that you were punched seconds before getting here. <laughs> it was pandemonium. I Who hurt you and why? Tell no, me where no, they no, hurt I, you. I'm doing a movie called End of Watch with Jake Gyllenhaal, and I had like a fight sequence. And I'm, I, apparently I'm not very good at blocking because I'm like, I, <laughs> I got, just I, not I got known hit in the ear defense. a couple times. Yeah, and uh, I, you know, I got punched in the face and in the ear, whatever. And uh, then it started just 
blown up, blown up. And I went, yeah, and I went to the doctor this morning. Oh, not like blowing up, like gaining popularity. It didn't like get a no, Twitter no, account. No, no, <laughs> no, it wasn't a big hit on YouTube, but it, I'm like, I, uh, I went to a doctor, then I went to another doctor, and then the doctor's like, we have to, you know, we have to drain it right now. I was like, what's going on? And it's just your ear. Right. And uh, so they drained it, and I'm, I'm here safe. You're a, you're a, you're a trooper. Aww. You're a trooper. You guys. Are those guys a bunch of interns? Huh? Well, yeah, most of them are. Nice. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know a single name over there, actually. I have no idea who those people yeah. are. Um, yeah. Hey, coffee guy. So the, uh, the, the training for this movie, then, has been pretty rough? Yeah, I mean, we had, like, four or five months of, of training, like, you know, actually sparring, and, you know, me and Gyllenhaal, like, you know, go to this place called RMMA, uh, which, you know, right off the bat, I was like, I don't know if I want to do this movie. <laughs> you know? Um, and, you know, we sparred. You know, I worked out, like, five, ten times a week. It was crazy. Yeah. Are, you, can you, are you now a killing machine? Are you certified? Do they give you a plaque for the wall or something in, like that? Or? In, the, in the movies. Oh, okay, good. Uh, sure. Like, <laughs> a no cinematic problem. killing machine. Oh, yeah. You even you had your nose busted open, too? Like, on... Well, I mean, it, no, not busted open. Like this guy. All of a sudden. He's... What? Three seconds before the interview, you said blood was gushing? That, no, no. That... I said there was a trickle of blood. And all of a sudden... That, you said it was like the Niagara Falls of no, nose wounds. That's no, exactly what you said. <laughs> you said it was like someone opened up a fire hydrant. Yeah. A crimson <laughs> hydrant. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could just say that, and it's, yeah. it's totally reality now. Yeah, like, exactly. You got busted up. Well, I, I want to get to the lighter side of things now, which, uh, 30 minutes or less, hilarious movie, but uh, there are some big, big names in it, and I swear on everything, uh, I don't have much to swear on in this world, but what little I do, you stole the show. Yeah. Absolutely stole the show. This coming from the guy that says I was gushing blood. <laughs> I, I really thought you said you were gushing it for a oh, second. Oh, sorry. No, it uh, just came out a little bit. Oh, that's fine. It's much better tail when it's like when yeah, exactly. it flooded the arena. Oh, yeah. You know, no, and, when you see, or any, when, if you see any kind of blood, you're like, oh, my God, that's my blood. Right. And anytime it's yours, it's, it's a big deal. But uh, truly stole the damn show in 30 minutes or less. Like, really, every second that your character was on the screen, myself and everybody that I was with was laughing their heads off. I, yeah. I thought it was insane. You're like, me and my two neighbors loved it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are. They are they're, they're on Rotten Tomatoes, too. So you'll appreciate it. <laughs> um, and and so I know you've done a lot of dramatic roles, but uh, is is comedy something that, that was that personally that, that you wanted to approach and attack? I did, or? I did. I'm, I got, I wanted to do it, and I remember like seven years ago, I I tried to get into some sitcoms, and I think that's just the hardest thing in the world. Like yeah. I think it's a whole art unto itself. And I you know I would always go I'm like, what's the feedback? They're like, you're not funny. I was like, what? No problem. Oh, look at these guys. They feel that's a that's an Oprah moment right yeah, there. Yeah, they feel bad. All of a sudden, there's some Coldplay music going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like twelve dudes just started menstruating all of a sudden, just out of <laughs> out of solidarity. That's oh. horrible. Um, horrible. No, so what? So literally, the feedback was, "You're not funny. Stay out yeah, of it. And get I away." Yeah, I try to get like you know, for what I do for dramatic work is to like try to. You know, see, you know, read the script and like, who reminds me of this? Who reminds? Oh, oh, and then I'll hang out with the person and literally just imitate, until I think, you know, how some people can imitate their parents. Yeah. That's how I want to, you know, that's how I approach acting. So, uh, I just tried it for Observer Report. I saw this movie, um, American Pimp, and I, you know, I would always stop and I was like, why, why do all these guys have lisps? And then it's because they all have gold fronts and not enough air goes through the teeth. <laughs> Literally, so he's like, man, I swear to God. You know? <laughs> and I was like, I would love to play a black skin dude. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? Like a black skin, black Mexican guy. Yeah. With my, you know, and I got a perm. I was like, why not? And, but did you find that person in real life and hang out with it's, them? Or? If you rent the, the movie American Pimp, you'll find five of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's falling from the sky in that film. Yeah, exactly. Uh, listen, I, 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 with no, no, no lie, truly, you stole the show, and I was not expecting it. It's a great performance, and it's a great movie as well. So thanks for coming Very on. Very much about it. Please try not to die yeah, during this next one. Michael Pena, everybody, 30 Minutes or Less opens on Friday, but now we're sending it over to Canvas. Time to attack this custom gear. If you prefer art to be of the musical variety, then you'll want to check out the Save the Music auction for these one-of-a-kind DJ turntables. As part of a charity to raise money for music programs in schools, these custom Pioneer CDJs have been remixed by various musicians ranging from the Crystal Method to rocker Tommy Lee. There are all types of designs from a Lego-inspired turntable to this guitar-infused board. To get the lowdown on the auction for these custom turntables, head on over to CharityBuzz.com. And finally, do you like to force your friends to watch your TV shows? Yeah. If so, you'll want to get your hands on the video coat. 
This wearable TV is made up of a thousand LED lights and wraps around the entire body. Video is streamed through an iPod, which means forcing your girlfriend to sit through hilarious episodes of The Simpsons has never been easier. Though this code is only one of a kind, the guys over at cathodecorner.com are working on creating more of these Technicolor coats. Just realize each coat will set you back a cool 40 grand. Oh. Yes. To get the loadout on all of these custom items and more, head on over to g4tv.com slash AOCS. Still ahead, a splashy epic fail is up next. Yay. I'm not gonna jinx it. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I nailed it twice. That is it. I, I... Coming up tomorrow on an all new Attack of the Show. Will I Am will be here live in studio with his new groundbreaking special, I Am First, Science is Rock and Roll. Then Blair Herter cheats death when he sits down with the cast of Final Destination 5. Find out how Herter will perish during the interview. And X Play's Adam Sessler continues Xbox's summer arcade series with a crazy space shooter called Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet. See it tomorrow. Today, folks, we have the perfect epic fail for this scorching hot summer, if I may say so. You may. I do. Everybody into the pool! Yeah! Maybe not everybody, though. Epic <laughs> that sounded funny. Someone just went swimming. Yes. In the shallow end of the gene pool. Oh. Pain is what makes it uh. funny. Hey, thanks to Michael Pena, Olivia Solon, and Chris Gore. And you should stick around an all new episode of Proving Ground. It's going to start rather soon. Would you agree? Aluminium. Yeah, what was with that? <laughs> Aluminium? I don't know. Aluminum I thought and, that and, that's and, how you pronounce and it. And Nyan Cat. Nyan Cat. It's not Nyan Cat. It's not? No. I thought it said.